You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a seed. Of every good and perfect gift. Come from the Father. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. everybody doing on this fine evening. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday, all that beautiful jazz. Get ready to start the week off right. We're going to start it off. We're really right. Hallelujah. Um, Welcome to Marriage Takeover. If you have not been to this platform on before, where we are coming to you with practical solutions, practical tools, practical resources, where we get to build one another in our marriages, in our relationships. If this is your first time tuning in, Eric and I have been married now for 21 years. And there were some resources, some things that we kind of went through throughout our marriage on the brink of divorce, on the brink of just kind of working and working in the church and not really having the resources and the tools that were necessary. And so one of the things we wanted to do was to be able to offer a platform for others, not that we're the marriage experts, not that we are the relationship experts at all, but just to offer you some tools just to say, hey, we can make it. We're coming back with marriage takeover so we can take over marriages for the kingdom. And we are excited about it. So... Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you now, God. We give you the glory, honor, and praise, Father God, simply yes, because of your goodness. God, we thank you, oh God, for just your grace, your mercy, oh God. That's that's just so awesome. And Father, we just thank you right now. God, we ask that you touch these lips, Father, yes, in the God. name of Jesus, God, that it may not alter the purity of your good word, oh God. God, we ask that you just have thine own way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we bless you, God. God, we ask that you, God, allow us to encourage those that are that might be downtrodden, God, and bring more excitement to those that are still on that mountaintop. And so, God, we ask that you just touch your people in listening distance, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And, God, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Today's show is being brought to you all by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com backslash marriage takeover. Browse through some of those unmatched selections of the audiobooks, the programs. Download a title just for free, just for listening to us. Start listening. Start getting your, your uh, book list up together, and it's just that easy. Again, you're going to go to audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover. And we just want to thank our listeners and our viewers for being here. We want to thank um, those of you all who also will be listening to the podcast. So thank you so much. If The podcasts are available on Apple, Droid, and online platforms under Marriage Takeover. And we are being listened to now in over eight different countries. So we're really excited about Amen. that. Country. And excited about what God is going to be doing. So yes. we will, towards the end of the broadcast, start offering some of the different resources um, marriage Takeover Date Night is coming in October, all that great stuff that we'll tell you towards the end of the broadcast. So, again, thank you so much for joining, and we're going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to need you not to do the spirit finger. <laughs> jump. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's funny. <laughs> you know, I was sitting here, and we was, and we was kind of debating because it's been pretty much a, it's been a, rough, uh, a rough week for us, I guess I'll say. Just when, uh, when you kind of get blindsided, I won't say blindsided, but when you start getting – um, certain things that kind of take place or go on in your in your life, where it kind of causes you to take a sit back and like, hmm, how do we gonna how do we attack this or how do we go about with this? One thing that I have come to understand that it makes when you have when you when you have in your marriage when you're on the same page and you are in tune with each other's step, it makes it it makes the it makes it easier to handle certain situations. And I believe that sometimes that what makes us hard, what makes it hard for us to handle certain situations is that um, we don't be in step with one another or we don't be on the same page with one another or we have that lack of community, that community, we have that lack of communication with one another saying, hey, this is what I'm dealing with, this is what, this is what's going on. 
And so as for married people, I guess if you want to look at it, is the question would be, what do you do in in the waiting? What do you do uh, when you don't know really what what else to do? What do you do? What do you and your spouse do when you might have hit that point in the road where it's like, okay, you know, it seems like it is what it is, but it's like, ah, how do I, how can I move from here, or what's the what's the next next place to take, or what's the next thing to do? Because one thing that we have come to look at, one thing we have come to look at is the is the statistics of marriages on, on how they end. It's and um, from the last time I was looking, it was saying that fifty three percent, fifty three percent percentage of marriages end in divorce when you're talking over finances. But then you got, but then I forgot what the other percentage was. Um, but is it right? I'm just gonna deal with off the fact that I that I grabbed because I forgot what the other one is. So my thing, from what I come to gather from that, is that there's something that took place that led down that way. And so one thing that I one thing that I come to understand is that when you begin to look at what marriage takeover is, it's being able to. Is basically being able to to stay and fight for the marriage. Now I'm saying I'm not talking about something that's um you know if you're being abused and stuff like that. No, I'm not talking about that because I come to find out that a lot of us throw in the towel over the, some of the simplest stuff because for one is that how, how can I put it? It's like you don't want anything to take place in your marriage to help it to go to help it to get stronger because I don't care. I don't care how much you do, your marriage can't get stronger if you don't know how to go through stuff together. Um, so it's just like when you're looking at yourself, when you say, oh, I want to start working out, where well, your body begins to go through a transformation <laughs> right, right. in order for it to work out, it's soreness. But then once I, for that one time we take that one half a mile walk, our bodies are sore. What we do then? We throw in a towel. But it's the same thing that we deal with in our Oh, they leave the seat. Oh, he left the seat up. Oh, well, ain't nothing wrong with you. Put it down. You got to sit down. So, you know what I mean? It's just like being able to find, it's like being able to find another alternative because like, oh, I'm tired of that. Okay, then let's talk about it and start, and start, and stop allowing it to get to the level to where you can't deal with it anymore. And see, that's where, I guess that's the thing that, that you have to understand because scripture says, and the two shall become one. It's not saying that you won already, but a lot of times we don't like to build to the one because we can only climb the same ladder together, but we have to recognize who's taking, who's going to go first. But oftentimes we don't, we don't even, we recognize ourselves first before we even recognize our, our spouse. Right. 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 No, that's good. And so what do you do when you're in that waiting? What do you do as you're, trying to come and join together as one. What do you do and how do you do that? So just your resources, talk to each other. Get to know one another. So for me, the seat was a big issue <laughs> because I didn't want to go to the bathroom at night and I didn't want to fall in the toilet going to the bathroom, mm-hmm. right? That was one issue. But then let's take it a little bit deeper when you're talking about business, when you're talking about um, ministry, so you're going and you're moving to and fro in ministry and you're doing the things that God has called you to do and then say that maybe your spouse isn't up to where you are. I know there were a couple of people, just a side note, who couldn't get us on Facebook. So I just want to make sure that people are able to get us on Facebook. So if you see me looking down at the phone or you see me chatting, it's, I'm just responding to make sure everybody's able to get on. So when it comes to ministry, then what do you do in the waiting? What do you do when your spouse isn't on that same spiritual level as you? What do you do when you are, your, your spouse doesn't have the same giftings as you? Like, what do you do in that space? What do you do in that time frame? I'll tell you what you do. What you need to do is find out, did I marry you for who you are, or did I, or did I marry you for what you can bring? That's not, you know what I'm saying, because people... <laughs> well, you married me because of who I am, because a lot of times... Like when we got married, you we didn't know, know <laughs> we didn't know our giftings then. We well, didn't know what God had for us. Well, so at that moment, we were marrying each other for who we were. But at the same time, we ain't know Jesus. Well, I knew him. I knew my mama drugged me, so I still had that high in me. Um, <laughs> but it was, but it's still, but it's like, what do you do when you're in that 
when you're in that, because you, every marriage has a waiting period. Why is, there, why is it important to have that waiting period in the marriages? It's because, just like what, just like wife was saying, because now you're here on, you're here on this level, but I'm here on, but you're on this level, but I'm on this level, or vice versa. Right. Because you may have one aspect of your life where your strongest, where your strongness is, where your strength is. Thank you, strongness. Where your strength is, and because of where your strength is, is my weakness. But then at the same time. I'm at a level where my strength is, but what my strength is is your weakness. And when you're in that waiting period, because you're still trying to figure out how to marry the two, because that's what helps to make the, when the scripture tells, and the two shall become one. So you, so we, we have to understand how do these pieces fit together. And oftentimes, we don't stand in it long enough to understand how these pieces mesh. Because it fits, it's just like you're putting a puzzle together. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's like you, how you're putting a puzzle together. I don't know if you did like I did. You know, when I knew that this piece looked like it should go, I'm trying to force it. <laughs> I'm trying to force it. But no, it don't. it's something that you can't force because the times of when we force, something is agitated. Right. So then what do you do when it, the agitation comes? Do you get upset in the middle of that ag- agitation? Do you get um, upset? Do you walk away? Do you turn? Like, what is that behavior pattern that constantly comes? And it's a behavior pattern that takes place continually. Today we were talking about Daniel and how when he was kind of in that space where, if you know the story of Daniel, where he was um, being plotted yeah. against by the presidents and the princes. The lion's Den, Daniel, that part, that story. Go ahead. <laughs> where he was being plotted against with the princes and the, and the presidents. And, and they knew, he knew that they were kind of putting together this law, this decree that was going to put him into um, a capital, that, that was going to allow him to go through a capital law or to commit a crime, a capital crime, as a result of him praying. They knew that Daniel always prayed. They were jealous of Daniel. They didn't realize that they didn't figure out, couldn't figure out how to get to the king to be favored. So what they did was they put together this plan and had the king sign this decree. And then from there, they went and in that waiting season, he had a choice to make. He had a choice to make whether or not he was going to move forward in that, in that decision to continue to pray as he would normally do. Or he had a choice to sit back and say, you know what? I don't think I want to do this. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a coward. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to move forward. I'm going to shift because of the law. So he had a choice to make. He had a decision to make in that particular moment. So in that waiting, what do you do? In that waiting, who will you become? In that waiting, when you are trying to figure out how you and your spouse are supposed to get together on that one accord with Uh your finances, what do you do? When y'all are trying to figure out how to get the parenting together, that's a whole different dynamic. What do you do when one of your children goes off astray and they don't do what you taught them and what you built them to do. Like, what do you do? What do you do when you're, you and your spouse don't see eye to eye when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to your moving and you're walking and you're talking and the way that you're moving together and forward in ministry? Like, what do you do? So in that waiting, you have a response. And the choice that you make is going to be able to determine your next move forward. So uh-huh. Are you going to come together and pray? Are you going to come together and get to know what those vulnerabilities are in your spouse? Mm. But, you know, here's another one, though. Are you going to have the patience enough? That's where it boils down to because oftentimes when, you, when you're going through, it, it's, a, it's always going to be a test of your patience. Right. And see, the one thing that we oftentimes miss is that it's our, it's those that are that are near and dear to us, the ones that we don't have patience with. Right. So it's like, can I be patient enough? Can I be patient long enough so that so that I can understand one, the moment that we're in, and two. Can I understand your reaction? Right. How does your reaction fit with my reaction? Right. So I'll give you a prime example. When we were, um, maybe when we first started kind of going to church. So Eric, you guys know his testimony. He was brought up in the church where I wasn't necessarily. um, Well, we went to church. I don't want to say I wasn't brought up in the church. I went to church. She was a sometimes saint. It wasn't as often. Like I had aunts and uncles. 
aunts and uncles who were like deacons and deaconesses in the church and they had choirs and groups and song groups and all that stuff. But from my particular perspective, I didn't grow up in the church. Like I went to church on holidays and there were some times where they would invite us to church every now and then. The and holiday so, thing. And so I didn't grow up in the church as, as my husband did. I got and drugs. so when it was time to move forward in the thing of Jesus. <laughs> It's in his DNA, it's in his blood, babe. <laughs> so when it was time for us to be able to move forward, like our first part of our marriage, I was jealous of his relationship with God. Woo! Because there was a moment where he was just laying before God. He was in prayer all the time. He was in prayer. He was always at church. He was always, you know, doing something in the ministry. And I'm sitting back home like, what the heck? Yo, like, what you doing? Trying I to need, drag me out I need you at home. Like, what are you doing? But see, and that's, and that's the thing. <laughs> Even sometimes with us, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad, <laughs> you, saying. I'm glad you said that because oftentimes, you know what I have learned in this? Is that, yeah, granted, I, I, so I, I thank God for Bishop Otis McCormick of um, New Jerusalem Church of God in Christ in North Pole, Alaska, because that man taught me that home is your first ministry. Right. When I say taught me, like she said, I was always at church. Always. I was always at church. When I tell y'all, always, always at church. I get home, he leaving. Where you going, best? I'm going, going to church. church. Hallelujah. Ain't and no place to do at church. Like, what ain't no better place to be but in the house of God. Hallelujah. But at the <laughs> same time, <laughs> at the same time. You know, I'm I'm going to lay before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prostrate. I'm going to be able to prostrate before. Him. But <laughs> and so it it came down to the point to where the uh uh we was building we was building on the church because did some standing part right of the building. And so we was building. And so you know I'm always there with, with Bishop McCormick. I'm there with him, and we going to work. I walked in there. <laughs> I walked in there once, and he says, "Why are you here?" I was like. What? <laughs> He's like, why are you here? He says, no. He says, if you want to be effective in ministry, you got to make sure that your home is effective first. I left. I went I went back home, and it was like, she was like, why are you back? Don't you got some Jesus to go lay in the boat? <laughs> I was like, what's uh, going on? So you know me and my carnal mind, ladies. Like, if y'all can get it. I, I was Don't like, say carnal mind. Say your attitude. So... <laughs> When he come to me talking about, hey, baby, now you go find your Jesus. <laughs> Y'all go handle that. You go find your Jesus. I don't know nothing about what you're doing. So, uh, uh, but that's when, that's when I understood is that for those that are in ministry, you cannot be effective unless your house is in order, period. It's not saying ain't nobody going to jump out of pocket and stuff like that, but you get your most training by putting your house in order because I don't care who you are, period. I don't care. You can be the husband or you can be the wife. You cannot be effective unless your house is in order. Well, how does it stay in order? Because you look at it. Anytime you got a trial that you got to deal with, well, nine times the trial come through, come through the house. <laughs> so right. that's where you learn how to labor for God. That's where you learn how to speak those things that are not as though they are. That's how you. That's how you learn. That's how you even draw closer to him, because it took prayer to understand. Because I felt as though now she's starting to hold me back because she's jealous of the relationship that I have with him. And I was jealous, y'all. Like I can't even. You was jealous. I was so jealous. I was just saying that. I was so jealous. She ain't know me. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not listening because. Well, well here is <laughs> the reality, though. I was minute, jealous yeah. because. Here we are, newly into our marriage, and he was spending more time. And you know, you would, so my backwards mind and my backwards thought process is: you would want a man that's laboring before God. You would want a man that's going to be in God's presence. You would want a man that's doing all those different things. But he was spending more time with that and the things of God than he was building our relationship, building our marriage. So he was forsaken the household as a result of him just trying to labor before God and get to know God. So then there's a balance. Mm. Because for me, I was envious. I was like, no, nah, you go and you handle that. Make sure God cook for you too. <laughs> make, sure, I, <laughs> make sure. I, like, no, it was, no lie. No lie. Was, no lie. I'm, she, and I'll be honest. I'm she, transparent, y'all. You say that. Make sure he cook for you too. I said, well, that this is what I did wrong. But I said, 
Well, he's a better cook than you. Because <laughs> that, that's how she could cook. I had to learn how to cook. So, like, well, he's a better cook than you. Because see, this is why, and this is why, for those that are in, for those that are in ministry, I, and you know what? I, if you, when you look at it, even, I thank, I thank you, Lord, but I'm not, not just ministry, but even those that are in business. Right. I have a friend of mine that has, that has an awesome business. But guess what? It did not take off to the magnitude that it did until his wife joined. Right. When I say it did not take off to the magnitude that it did, I mean literally. I it's a dynamite business. God knows, because I you know I have to use it for certain stuff myself. But but it did not take off to the magnitude until his wife joined. And when his wife joined, it rose to a whole nother level. Right. And so the thing is, we have to learn how to involve one another with the things that right. we're doing. But again, we got to see how it meshes up, and that's a and that is the hard part of actually becoming together to work as a team, and that's in every area. So even your business can take a hit if your house ain't right. And I think had Eric invited me into, I invited Eric you Michael, in. So I've been lying. I've been let's pray. <laughs> I'm like, you want to pray with me? No. Did you? Did you, you want to pray? No. <laughs> I don't remember that ne- 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 neck roll yeah. at all. All no. that. <laughs> I don't remember him inviting me in. So let's, maybe let's he pray, did. honey. Let's pray. It took twenty. It took twenty years. Don't don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you and all you. <laughs> So, so I'm sorry. think about that in your space. And I think a lot of times I didn't move forward because I didn't understand the things of God. Ah. Even as we were growing our relationship and things got, you know, a little bit, we got more involved in church. Like when we moved from Alaska, we moved here to the, the D.C. metropolitan area. It was a matter of, okay, so it was the same thing, same rigmarole, same like process with everything. But for me, it was, I think for me, it was the insecurity of not understanding the word of God. It was the insecurity of not really understanding his presence. It was the insecurities of not really being able to, I didn't grow up with this. I don't know what this is, you know, and, and my life had been, I have an awesome testimony, but when I was going through, I didn't realize that that was the testimony at that time. So I didn't realize that that was something that God was, had specifically assigned to my life for the assignment that he has for me, for the calling that he has for me. I was thinking, well, if there was a God, why would he allow me to go through this? Mm. If there was a God, why would he allow this to take place Mm. in my life and this to happen to me? So at that moment, I was still kind of delicate whether or not I was going to move forward in ministry, whether or not I was really going to trust something that when my life had been in shambles up until that point, and I figured to myself, well, if God is the God that he says that he is, then why am I dealing with all this that I'm dealing with, not understanding the calling that he had on my life? Right. So if you're in that space and your spouse is not understanding and you you feel like they're maybe not joining along with you, I want you to think about that for a moment. Really sit down and have that conversation and be like, hey, like, what's what's going on? Because had he had that conversation with me, I would have been like, I'm really not feeling it. Like, if there really was a God that this, this, and this, you know, that does this and that does that, then how come my life was in shambles like this? Like, how are we going to be able to get out? And then that's something that you guys get to build together. Oh, wow, yeah. And you know, and it's not just not just your not just your not just the spiritual aspect, but also even with your business. Even if you, it's like I had to ask you, yo, how in the what? Wait a minute. First, why do you why do you do what you do when you do it? Because because of what you, it's like I know numbers, but I don't know all the other stuff. I I'm sorry, I just don't have time for that. Put me in the back office. I can keep track of your books. Make sure the tax man stay off you. That's all I can do. But how do you how do you do what you do, and how do you make that time to do it? And see, that's the one thing that, as one another, we don't like to teach our we don't like to teach what our strengths are. But we have to be. But we have to be. How can I say? What's the word? We have to be more vulnerable with each other. Yeah. Because oftentimes, do you know? Put it like this. Do you know that even and do you know what you are afraid of, you can oftentimes overstep your spouse because of your fear. Right. 
And that instead of saying, hey, it's like it took me to understand a long time. I was like, baby, why? Because I ain't going to lie. Her grind is a whole lot. Her, her grind is way more than mine. Every day. Ever. Every, every day that she is hustling, <laughs> you hear me? Every day. she, But her grind is way more than mine. I was like, well, dang, bro, what's your grind is? You will find me on my knees. Praise the Lord. But I'm still there. Every, I don't have to work as hard when I see Jesus. Come on here right. now. Because right. when he said, okay, it's time to move, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm out. Period. Right. But her grind is a whole lot more than mine, and it's for the simple fact for the simple fact that her grind it resists off of it comes off of her fear, her fear of not having. Right. But I had to let her know. See, you're scared of something that I'm not scared of. What do you mean you're not scared of not having? Because understand this, I my, my belief system is everything comes from Christ. If you don't want me to have it, then guess what? I ain't, I ain't going to have it then. Right. So everything, but even though, because I don't get me wrong now, I do know what work is. <laughs> I'm making sure I know what work is. But when I get when I get my grind on, my purpose is always going towards my purpose. Because oftentimes we got to know that there are certain hurdles that we come up, that we come to that, yeah, okay, I can jump this hurdle by myself. But then there are also hurdles that you can't, that you can't do without your spouse. So you have to actually teach your spouse the fundamentals of what you're doing so that your spouse can have an understanding. Because if you do not stand together, if you and your spouse do not stand together, it's going to make whatever goal that you all have that you're saying, no, it's going to make whatever goal that you have individually and whatever goal your your spouse has individually, it's going to make it that hard, that much harder to accomplish if you do not stand together. Um, I have been I have been a firm believer of is it Psalms one thirty three? I think it's Psalms one thirty three. You can be a firm believer. <laughs> I, I know how you gonna be a firm believer. You don't even know where it's at. <laughs> but uh, but, I, but I'm a firm I'm a I'm a firm believer. I think it's one thirty three. Let's see Psalms one thirty three. Yeah, so I, I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer when it says, "Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity." Right. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. There, the Lord will command the blessing, even life forevermore. So, as long as you are unified. God is going to command the blessing from that point on. Right. And so that's why you have to teach one another what you say. If your strength is here and my, where your strength is, is my weakness. And then where my strength is, is your weakness. Once they use, uh, I heard somebody say that I, when they married, they said that their strengths are the same. And I had to let them know, no, uh, because if your strength, all the same, then how can you how can you begin to build one another, one another up? Now you may have a certain say like if we were both heavy business minded individuals, then okay I got it. But then now the weaknesses come in, the weakness come in on how we begin to marry the two, because it doesn't matter. Your spouse has a strength where you're weak. Period. I listen. That's just, it's just it's a known fact. You understand know what I'm saying? So even for those that that enjoy coaching, <clears throat> there are certain there. How can I say? It? There are certain aspects of your job that your wife will have the patience for. Right. Because you know, I had a friend. They've been together since high school, and I know you know he's coaching. I mean, and, and awesome, just awesome marriage. But it's the patience that comes along with the job. Because I told I told her because you know. An opportunity came Same. where I was like, nah, I can't do it right now because I knew that her patience for it, it, it ain't ready. It ain't ready. Listen. But we'll also understand that if it's for me, it'll come back around. I'd rather have my wife than go out to, than go out to my dream job. I'd rather have my spouse than go out to my dream job. Why? Because once I have the time and show her and teach her that, that, I'm, that, that, I, that I do, it's just like right now, you can ask her anything about a about a about a uh, a four two five defense. She can share some parts of it. 
Boom. Y'all had a tip. It's football season, y'all. I, I, I had a I had excited picture. about it. So it, it, I had a tip, but she, first I had to get her to, to, to like football. Right. Once she likes football, when I say I didn't really have to, that's when I put time in prayer. So once she liked football, then she began to ask all the questions. Then when I got the job as being a defensive coordinator, then it was like, okay, what are you studying? Hey, I don't mind showing you. I'm showing you the four two five defense. Now what are we looking at? Boom. So now she said she said back telling my son because he played, you know, he played why didn't you do this? <laughs> no, that is not that, you hit the no, hole? that is not the play. <laughs> and so it's like now he ended up she ended up becoming his biggest critic. What happened? Right. Oh, no, no, no. Ended up being his biggest critic. But now it's like, mm, okay, because I took the time to teach her, and so therefore there are, uh, and so therefore we have to be patient with one another so that we can be able to teach one another, just so that we can go. Because guess what? It may still be her weakness, but it does not, it does not stop her from her pushing me. Because then now she's making sure, hey, do you have this? Do you have this? And vice versa. So like when she's doing her her hustle thing with her with the business, then it's like, hey. Don't forget this. I need these numbers. <laughs> Don't forget this. Keep track of this. So then you're able to boost one another. Right, right. So we're going to stop and pause for a call so that we can pay some bills, take some questions, and comments. Like, share. Know. Again, this is a platform not for y'all to just kind of sit here and listen to us talk. But let's share. Let's build one another. Let's make sure that we're boosting up the marriages. Let's make sure that we are igniting each other with the tools necessary so that we can get to the next level. The so email. that we can do what is necessary for us as we're in that waiting, waiting for that next shift. All right? So today's episode and show is being brought to you again by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audio book with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash Merit Takeover and browse through the unmatched selection of audiobooks and programs, download a title that you're interested in that you want to start listening to, and it's just that easy. So go to audibletrial.com slash Merit Takeover. Why Audible? So Audible's content, it includes some unmatched selection and audiobooks, some original shows, some news, um, comedy, and so much more that are being done by some of the leading authors and audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. So you can select any book of your choice for free and download that for free at Audiobook today. And again, that's audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover for your free audiobook today. All right? So with that in mind, let's do a check-in for questions. Um, I know we are on When Christians Speak, Blog Talk Radio with Reverend Ray Rose. Uh, Reverend Ray, do we have any questions on Blog Talk, Chris, When Christians Speak, Blog Talk Radio? I don't know. Um, not at this time. Not at this time? Okay, great. And then just want to do a check-in with Facebook and with YouTube. We appreciate you guys for tuning in and listening so much. Thank you guys so much. So, and also, out of, the, out of the many books that are out there, here's one that you can key on is, well, well uh, awesome authors that are out there. This is just one book that stood out to me. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. It's called Trading Places. It's the best move you'll ever make in your marriage because, now, it's an easy read. It's a quick read. So like, if you want, when you download it on Audible, it's only three hours and 32 minutes. That's what it is. But it's a it's a great book because the thing is a lot of us don't understand what our spouse deal with because we don't try to see it from their point of view. That's good. And so when you begin to see it from your spouse's point of view, then I help you to become more one, especially especially when you've been goal oriented. If your if your if your uh if your if your marriage is goal oriented, then you will begin to see when you trade spaces uh place spaces. When you trade places with your spouse, because now it's like, hmm. So I'll be honest with you. My wife had to go out of town for some work for like two weeks. I was left here with the kids. So I understood <laughs> how it was to <laughs> to have to cook for them, wake them up, take them to school, uh, wash. Uh, I know y'all like, dang, you ain't do none of that. Uber taxi. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little different when it's two, but when it's just one, and listen, I did. I, my eyes came open to a lot more stuff, and I say, "Oh shoot, y'all been too big for this." So what I end up doing? <laughs> put them to work. <laughs> I put them back to work. And so 
on, and when she returned, like, uh-uh, oh, no, we're not going back to the old way. Some new things are taking place. So, uh-uh. So, guess what? So, now, by me trading, by, by us having a moment to trade places, even though we didn't really trade, I just happened to pick up everything because she was out. So, anyway, but then that's when I, I recognized what she dealt with on an everyday basis with dealing with jobs, dealing with uh, and dealing with the kids, dealing with the school, that whole nine. Because I had to go to the school, I had to do. I said, wait a minute, I got a job. <laughs> wait a minute. So I had to take off one day because I had to deal with my child at school. But it was cool. I said, oh, got it. I understand now. I understand what you deal with. Now I can now I can help effectively. Right. And that's where I think where we miss it because we not able to help effectively. All help isn't good help. Right. If you're not gonna be uh, effective in your help, it's just like when I'm out. When I, the first time she's tread like, lightly. oh, tread lightly, tread lightly. Well, the, the first time she wanted to just, I think she just wanted to be around me when I was working on the car, and it was like, hey, okay, hand me a, uh, hand me that quarter in socket. What? A what? Right. Hey, you know what? Just slide me the tray. Just slide it to me. So I mean, but still. You know, it's like, okay, this ain't for me. I think I'm going to do something else. But even the yard work. Oh, my God. You got to go wait, back to last year's move. Wait, wait, wait. So, I did better. I did. Let's, let's go to the yard work. Let's go to the yard work. <laughs> I did. So, as you know, if you go back, if you go back a ways, you see that I'm always doing the yard work by myself. You are not always. You're it's, doing the most of it by yourself. However she wants to put it, make herself feel good. I'm cool I, I with it. I sweep the driveway. And the sidewalk, and I rake up the leaves, Absolutely. and I rake up the grass. Did she pull any weeds? That's all I want to know. I didn't. You didn't ask me to pull weeds. Oh, I ain't know I had to ask when you saw me. You know what? I was at home when you did the weeds. Oh my God! You know what? It's I, cool. been... I say, oh, I need to put this on video. <laughs> that she, she first time she helped me. Second time, hmm. <laughs> so I, I have this thing against the elements that are outside. And it's about, I don't want to look like a tree monster after coming in, after working outside. I don't want to look like one. I don't want to sound like one. So we got a lot of trees around. We got a lot of grass around and allergies and sinuses. So I just didn't want to look like a tree monster. So with that, with that, I like to limit the time and the space that I'm outside. But I like to make sure that I can help him just a little bit because as I can help him, that means he doesn't have to be out there by himself that long. Two minutes. <laughs> Minutes, so see, that, I got a, I got another wife checking and she says she brings them ice water. So see, I'm doing a little <laughs> see. Hey, well, at least they we, got, all, we all play our role. No, I, no we no, have ice water for no, you. No, after after I almost passed. No, after I did pass out. So let's do a check in, <laughs> fellas. Fellas, if it is what 80, 90 degrees outside, you trying to push no. with a push more. It was ninety. It was ninety degrees. So ninety degrees outside, you gotta push more outside during the daytime, not at night. And you're pushing during that the uphill. daytime, you're pushing uphill. It's a steep hill on almost an acre of land. Pretty much, fellas, you're getting that leg work in. <laughs> and you dress with the full, what is the full cardio, what is the, the mechanic suit yeah, or something? Of course. I ain't trying to get it's, an element. It's all black. It's hey. all zipped up. And you outside, you got your headphones on. No one really knows. We just know that you're outside cutting the grass. But you're not hydrated. You were supposed to have water the, the day before you went in. All this other and stuff, I did. Right? So he come in the house about to literally pass on the anybody, I'm about to. anybody know my husband? Y'all know that he's loud. Y'all know that he, I am not loud. And let me see somebody respond. Talking about I'm loud. We <laughs> don't get comical. it. Y'all know that he's like that. He's like full of energy. He's like full of like that's just so he comes crawling in the door and you can hear this faint sound like. What's the, yeah. I'm, I'm calling like, my daughter. He barely whispering, and I just happened to be in the office, and I was like, why is he whispering? What is going on? I come and walk down by the garage door, y'all. He is laid out. I'll pass out. On the floor. He is gone. About to pass out from here. I ain't about to. I'll pass out. I was out. like, are you kidding me? I'm glad the AC was on because it brought my temperature down. So ASAP. I had to go and get all the frozen fruit, all the frozen vegetables, oh, man. dump it on him, get some ice water. So now we have ice water prepared for him, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, why would you go out there and you don't have enough water? Like, why but would you go out? In my mind, why you ain't checking on me? 
So, man, hello. That's that trading we spaces. All, we all know the element. You know what? We need to trade spaces again, places again. Let her go cut some grass so she can see how it is. Yeah, no, so I'm not cutting grass. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm a, I can hire somebody to cut some grass. But I'm not getting out. Of I always here. want to spend money. <laughs> I'll rake leaves. I will. I will sweep the ground. I will. I'll do all of that. So yeah, no. So yeah, so it's a, it's a, you know sometimes because oftentimes we don't under we don't understand how to trade places with with our spouse. But if you just try, if you really want to get an in depth look at what your spouse do for real. Trade spaces. Take a week. Do a week. Do a day. Do two days. Do whatever uh, so that you can, because that'll help you understand what your spouse deal with on an everyday basis. Understand, I know you can't trade spaces, can't trade places with going to work, but you can trade You can trade places with the duties on, on what you all do when you come home from work. Or even just trying to figure out, like, the thought process, because I know everybody puts their their role, right? Everybody knows how to help in their own space. And what works for you in your marriage, that works for you in your marriage. But even with the man taking on most of the responsibility. So I will take on a lot of the responsibilities when it comes to the kids, when it comes to the homes, when it comes to the schools. Like I'm in the schools, I'm working with the teachers, I'm volunteering, yeah. I'm doing all of that stuff. Because we when realized they, early the school don't want to see me. Well, not only <laughs> that, but then there's things like you, you're working. So in my mind, there's a certain level of responsibility and think different things going on in my mind. But in his mind, he's trying to figure out, he's looking at the money. He's lining up the bills. He's lining up, like, everything, the food. Like, he's doing that responsibility. And I don't think that I understood, like, what was going through his mind. Like, I'm the big dreamer. He's the, one, he's the one putting things into perspective. Poof. So... <laughs> So he's the one why, putting things into perspective. Why you gotta bust my bubble, Slim? I'm just trying to tell you. Right. Yeah, no, praise so, the Lord. Go so ahead. So I don't understand that sometimes when we're in that space and we're saying, "Hey, listen, I want to be able to do this," and he's like, "Well, wait a minute. What do you mean you want to do that? Why are we doing it this way and why are we doing it that way?" And he's like, "Well, listen. Let's sit down and let's talk about this. This is what we're doing. Like this is what is laid out. It's a, B, C, and D. I'm playing even now. I'm playing three really big events over the next year." He's just like, okay, so let's call, let's get the numbers. He's an accountant, I trade. Let's call, let's get the numbers, and it's not to crush me, but let's figure out what we're working with. Hmm. And then also in the back of his mind, so let's say we know, we know, like when you have the dreams and aspirations and something goes wrong, you're looking to buy a house, and something falls through and you don't get that opportunity to buy that house. In that male's perspective, he's trying to figure out how he's going to cover the family, how he's going to provide for the family, how he's going to make that shelter and provide that shelter to the family. Because something, it wasn't that he wasn't on his T's and Q's. They were doing everything, had everything set in order. So now it's a matter of something just happened, boom. I need right. to step in and I need to be able to provide. I need to make sure that we have this and we have that. So that is a different level of stress coming on to him. Whereas in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, well, I need to know what kind of furniture we get in. Well, <laughs> so next move is, okay, well, we got to look for it. Let's go to Belmont Furniture. Right. <laughs> right. So Let's go look at Lazy Boy. I'm they got still, a new section in. <laughs> in my thought process, I'm still moving, and God is dealing with me with faith, but I'm still moving and planning different things over here, where in his mind is, babe, we got to figure out uh-huh. a place to stay, like in the next <laughs> week. We, we got time to go to Furniture so. So in that space, I have to make sure that I step back, that I'm having an opportunity to really understand what he's going through, trading that space to say, okay, let's make sure that I'm boosting him up because I know that this is something that's near and dear to him with being able to provide for his family, with him being able to offer resources. So let me make sure that this is taking place. Case in point, even with the, the government shutdown. I wasn't getting paid. Oh, my God. We had savings set up aside, and that was good. But when it started to, to dwindle and it started to get real low, it didn't at that well. moment, he was like, okay, baby, I'm not well. worried about it. it like, God well. is going to take care of us in every need. And I thank God for it. But I was looking to him like, what are we going like, we go, <laughs> we to eat? Like, what, what's going on? The lights have been paid. Like, what's going on? All of the bills, the people, been, like, what's going on? So uh-huh. <laughs> And sometimes the way that we all have to exchange together. Right, because one time, because even in that, then you can begin to see what your spouse actually battles with. Because like during that government shutdown, 
it was it was more of a fear than it was of stability. Right. And so while she was in fear, I had to let her know, yo, we're stable. We're fine. Yeah, I don't need to be doing all that carrying on. But oftentimes, a lot of times, your spouse will find the comfort and the ease on how you're looking, but on how the husband is looking. Uh, but you have got to be able to rest. Whatever trial that comes your way that is out of your control, that gives you time to come together to be more one. So what are you doing the waiting? So what are you doing? And that's what you do. You got to begin to build together. Right. You got to trade. You have to trade the places so that you can understand what your spouse is dealing with. You can't worry about what trivia or, 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 or criticism that may come with it because it ain't got nothing to do with people. It has everything to do with you and your spouse. And see, that's one thing that kind of bothers me a little bit is that we'd rather look at what people would think versus what what I'm doing right. in my house. No, nah, darn people. Listen, people don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. That right there, that is them out of everything that you're trying to do. Right. Because if I look crazy outside <laughs> sweeping the broom with my little tutu thing on, you know what I'm saying, that my wife will when she clean, then let it be because I'm trying to understand what she deals with on the every. I don't care if that means, okay, hey, we go to church. Maybe not the tutu, baby, though. Maybe not the tutu. Listen, boo, what we do in our house is what we do. Ah, play with it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I ain't mean putting that out there like that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is because that now what that does, that also helps you to understand your wife even the more on why she do what she do and help you to understand why she do and how she do it. Right. And right. so that's and, and the same thing for your husband. Because you really want to be able to understand that because I think like I said, for me and and i I I'm careful to say this, but I'm still kinda of a little selfish. Because there are certain things <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh my god. That's <laughs> not bad. It's not that bad. Oh my god. <laughs> I found a perfect deal for Z X ten R R oh my god. I had to pass it up. No, but what did I tell you? I told you to go get it. And, you, and because he... Well, you just... <laughs> he just wanted to see it. He just wanted to see it. I told him team. to go get it. And he, did, he decided... He just wanted to go get it. So, but even in that, it was a matter of... I didn't understand because there was so much that I was doing on my plate... I don't understand. Well, how come you can't make sure that this is paid? How come you can't make sure that you call and you do this? How come you can't make sure that I didn't understand what it was that he was going through on his day to day and what he was doing? So it was a matter of, Tamika, be quiet, take a step back, take a class in Tone University, and just be quiet for a moment and just ask him. Because a lot of times with our tone, it's a lot. Our when they can't become vulnerable, then it means that we can't really get to the, the deepest secrets, the deepest thoughts, the deepest things we look at as a little thing. And so it's really important, ladies, that as we're going through our process and as we're going through, we want to make sure that we are mindful of our tone. We are mindful of what we're saying and how we're saying it that we don't prevent our men from being vulnerable. So we don't prevent our men from them saying, you know what, I'm not really saying right now. I don't know how to how that work out. I don't know how to tell you that. You know, I thought I really did forgive you for doing that. Like, it's a be mindful that we're keeping way open to opportunity so that we don't diminish them from being and not showing up fully for who they really are. Exactly. Marriage takeover. You know what? Take If you're with your spouse right now, take these two seconds and give them a kiss. I love you. <laughs> mm, I love you. Hallelujah. If you do it right, you might get happy later on the day. Praise the <laughs> Lord. But that is but good. And that's good. At the same time, men, we have to be careful with our tone because one thing that I noticed is that um, a couple months ago, 
when I, I recognize that when I'm when I'm in my thinking mode, how I'm gonna get this thing done, like basically when the weight is there, my my patience is like real small, so therefore my response is not always it don't always come out in the best tone. You know what I said? I said a couple months ago. Okay. So but that's something that I recognize and so now it's like, hmm, I take that minute to process it because if my tone is wrong, then again, y'all remember we dealt with flowers, then we don't want to do anything that's going to hurt our flowers because just like how we men or how we kind of put up our blockers, guess what? That women do the same thing as right. well based off of our tone. And so, and that's why when you begin to understand or begin to deal with, uh, how can I say, you know, those things that you would say would be like a dark piercing type deal, when you begin to deal with that and begin to recognize, hey, that's me. I was, I was getting ready to say that's my teammate, but no, because when you're trying to become one, it's you. That's your real. That's yours. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we have to make sure it's just like how she was saying, not fully recognized and had to watch the tone. Well, you got to remember, you're talking to your body. You're talking to your own self. Right. I don't know. I mean... <clears throat> Only people that I know that will stand in the mirror and call them call them own self dumb is those that are battling with depression. Right. So if you're battling with depression in your mm-hmm. marriage or uh, insecurity, right. if you're battling with your marriage now, that's now become a deeper issue because oftentimes when we're battling through certain we reflect it to the ones that we love. That's why they get hurt the most. Right. You see how this thing is kinda of opening up now because <clears throat> When you're dealing with insecurity and when you're dealing with depression, that, that, is, that is something now, now I need to really seek help. Right. Because oftentimes we can begin to see because uh, a friend of mine, uh, just they have, they, it's like uh, everybody has battled with depression, you know, as far as in their, in their lineage coming down. But it's like, hmm, okay, you know what, now let, let's go seek help. Because this thing can stop right here with you. It don't have to be passed on to your kids. So now let's seek help on why we're bad with depression. Right. So don't get me wrong. Now, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, while you seeking help, I'm in prayer. Right. Uh, while you seeking help, I'm in prayer. Because help is, by seeking help, it's going to show you how you can better battle, battle the, the, that, that, uh, how you can battle depression. But I'm going to go prayer. I'm going to go pray because that's not where my battle is. Right. So I can pray you through your battle because now by my prayer, now I'm asking God to deliver you from it. Right. So I'm not, I'm not knocking what God has gifted counselors to do because we need counsel because even, even in our marriage, oftentimes we don't recognize even the mental issues that our spouses deal with. And so some of a lot of stuff is generational curses, and some of the stuff is just what we happen to run into as we grew up. As, um, you know, how the enemy tried, if someone is always talking down to me, now for me to recognize my worth, now when I'm old, everything, now, that, now when I become older, everything out of my mouth is negative. Right. Why? Because that's I, was, I grew up, so it became a norm. So now it's a mental issue to let you know you're better than that. Right. And so right. that's what happens when we actually begin to get to know our spouse, begin to teach, because you know when your spouse is being vulnerable with you. Right. You know, you know when you're, cause it's, because it's you. You're going to know these things. You're going to know if your spouse, how your spouse handles conflict. You're going to know how your spouse, if you. <laughs> if you, when you, you know if your, if your spouse is a handyman or not. Right. <laughs> you're going to know these things. You're going to know what ticks them off, and you're going to know what calms them. My wife knows. When I get pissy hot, she already knows. All she has to do is just touch me. I'm calm. I don't know what it is. I think she got something on me. <laughs> no, well, she has, she, done, she done saved me a many times just by a touch. But one time, she didn't touch me, and it was a wrap. She came back from the bathroom and was like, what is going on here? Oh, my God. <laughs> I should have been here. But... It's just really important in that time when they're being vulnerable for you to be careful and that you hold that 
and that you you handle it lightly, right? Um, and responsibly. Like one of our our listeners said, to respond and not just react. And it's really important that you do that because in that moment, it's a matter of you can you can slow down any projection moving forward. You can hinder anything moving forward. And so with that, it's about 7.55. What I want to do is I want to make sure that people know how to get in contact with us. If you're listening on When Christians Speak Blog Talk Radio, you may not have questions now. Um, feel free to respond to any questions. Send us any questions. Send us any topics that you want us to talk about. That's marriagetakeover at gmail.com. Again, that's marriagetakeover at gmail.com. We also have a podcast listening. Make sure that you're tuning to that podcast. Um, it's a free podcast. And make sure that you don't forget about audibletrial.com. And we also are on YouTube. So I want to make sure that we that you know kind of how to get in contact with us. We will also be having a marriage retreat. It's in the planning now. It's going to be February 15th, uh, 2020. And all the details, we're working on all the details, so just make sure that you save that date. We also have the um, marriage, marriage takeover, takeover date, date night. night. That's going to be taking place in October. We know that school is just starting for everybody. Um, if you're in the South, it started a couple of weeks ago. So here in the D.C., um, or at least in the Maryland area, we start the 3rd of September. So we wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to kind of get in the flow of school first before we had a, uh, a date night. So we're going to be, that's the third weekend in October. So make sure that you are um, holding that to the uh, your calendar so that you don't miss out on that opportunity. Again, that's going to be October 18th, which is a Friday night. So make sure that you go ahead, get your babysitters now, set that stuff up so we can come together and have a great time. We'll we be able to do a contest for the couple. Y'all know we like to compete. So we're excited about that, and we are so excited about everything that God is doing. Yes, so we, we just want to make sure that we pray with you all. If you have questions, please send them in. We thank you so much for your time. We thank you so much for taking the opportunity out of your day, out of your evening to listen in to Marriage Takeover, and we, we really appreciate you. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you for every couple that's listening. We thank you for every individual that's listening, that's watching, whether they came to kind of see what's going on, whether they came for tools and resources, whether they came just to spectate. God, we thank you, God, for their presence. Yes, God. We thank you, Lord, and we just ask that you would continue to be with them, that you would watch over them, that you would bless them, that you would unite their marriage as one, that you you will continue to have your way in their lives, that you will continue to allow them to be vulnerable with one another, to be yes. able to respond and not to react, to be able to, to listen to one another, to be able to understand what the, each others are going through, to be able to grow together spiritually. In the name of Jesus, we just ask God that you would mend every broken heart, that you would mend every broken marriage, that you would have your way, that you would just consume them, God, with your love. Love covers a multitude of sins, yes, it does. and I just ask God that you would just continue to have your way in their lives. Allow them to trust you more. Mm -hmm. Increase their faith, God. Bless them. Bless their finances. Bless their homes. Bless their children. God, you bless their businesses. Bless them on their jobs. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, we for speak each and every now, individual that is listening, that is watching, that will listen, that will watch. Bless yes. them now in the yes, mighty Lord. name of Jesus. We love you, God. We honor you, and we ask that you continue to be lifted up in these marriages. You continue to be lifted up in the relationships. You continue to be lifted up in the homes, and God, we will honor you, God. We magnify you. We love you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank When Christians Speak Blog Talk Radio for joining in. So first off, last last week I recognized that we didn't give homework. So this week's homework, and honestly, honestly, I want you to blog it, not blog it. I want you to send us an email on on your homework. But take a day, take two days, take a week, and trade places with your spouse. Just trade places so that you can see what each one deals with, and then you'll be able to know then and, and see how that work out. And we'll check up. We'll check up on. Uh, we'll check up on you guys. Um, you know, and just you know, send us a uh, what you call them. Fans? Oh, hold on. You said trade places for a week, <clears throat> a day, two days, three days, however long. You let's, know, let's, let's do a day. Let's do you no. Know, let's do three days. What three days? Trade places for Ooh. three days. Yeah, let's do a day. Let's okay. Do a day. <laughs> we'll come back to it and try it for two days. And uh, post <laughs> yeah, or email. Send, yeah, post post what what you got, your what experience. you learned, or either uh, yeah, your experiences. Uh, you know, you can either post it to the Facebook thing, or you can just send us a send us an email. I, I, cause me, I like to know. Uh, not trying to be nosy or anything, but I'm just saying, I like to know, cause my question is gonna be, 
how does that cause you to be different with what you do and what your spouse do moving forward? Right. All right. We love you guys. We appreciate you, Reverend Ray Rose. Thank you so much. When Christians speak blog talk radio, thank you so much. And um, we appreciate you guys. And we just, again, we're good. Okay. Yep. Love you guys. See y'all next month. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., Be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce our newest broadcast that joined us in 2018, The Marriage Take Over the Body of One, hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. They will be addressing a wide range of topics that will serve to encourage you and to strengthen your marriage. So remember that every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the marriage takeover, the body of one.